in on. I mean, that's boom, boom, right to the ground. Some people say, you know, they run in there and they collide or something. I mean, it gets in there, boom. Oh, 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 All right, welcome back to the Lone Star Lowdown. Uh, I'm Ty Henderson. Uh, we're joined by Dylan Weber, writer for the AJC once again. Uh, Corey Guidry might be joining us during this segment. He's all wrapped up right now. Uh, but we're talking some NFL in this segment. Where we've been doing our deep dive into the divisions. Last week we did the AFC East, and this week we got the NFC East. Um, my my division, Dylan's division. You're a Giants yeah. fan. Uh, uh, arguably, arguably the best division too. Oh, uh, and the uh, NFC beast, the, the most well-rounded division. I mean, it's a complete gauntlet every single year. Hey, two playoff teams last two years. And that's that's incredible. Come on. Um, but yeah, Dylan here is a yeah. I know New York Super Gi- or New York Football Giants fan. Uh, Danny Dimes Contract back year. at it again. Y'all picked up that off. Did y'all big nice? year? Yeah, big year. He's in the. It, 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 what are you expecting out of the Giants this year? Uh, do y'all, I, I'm not too familiar with y'all's offseason moves. Uh, I mean, well, we start any, with any the big draft. I mean, year? like, um, yeah, Kayvon Trevino, like, that's. Yeah. Y'all had I mean, a, like, like, so, like, y'all had a good I mean, draft. there's potential. There is, but. I mean, the offensive line is still. Um, okay. You hope that Evan Neal can be, can be that with, with my boy Andrew Thomas. Like, you hope that those two can can you know actually make something there on the offensive line. Yeah, I mean y'all got y- y'all got two guys that were potentially going to go number one. Yeah, for like extended periods of time last year, K- Kalon Thibodeau before last year's college football season was a consensus number one pick based purely off of his physicals. He's he's a mon- it looks like a monster out there. Uh, I know people are questioning his drive and desire to actually want to play football. I mean, I don't um, know. Is that something I, that concerned you? Cause I don't know the guy. I mean, I just read these stories that say that, but like, is that just like, is that just smoke draft or draft smoke? Sorry. Like, like, you know, people thrown out there to get them to drop or, um, or stuff like that. I, I don't know. It's like, I just, I don't know enough about him. When I watched him in college, he was pretty damn good at football, but you know, I, 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 yeah. I don't know enough to say that. Sure. It scares me, but like, I feel like if he plays up to his talent, then like they just hit a home run. They're going to have an edge rusher that, you know, can, it could. Yeah. So got him got him, what, they got five? him at three. No. Um, yeah. Five. Cause. So they had five, uh, five, and seven. What was it? Because go? the first three, it was okay, uh, five seven. what Trayvon Walker, uh, Hutchinson, and then Stingley. The LSU guy, yeah, yeah, and, and then Sauce Gardner. I'm so I'm surprised Stingley went that high, but um, that's another that's for another day to talk about. Uh, y'all's win total is that seven games? I would agree. That seems a little that, high that, to me. Uh, but 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 we were, and we were just talking about this before the con like or the 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 schedule does kind of line up where like I mean if they can just put you know both hands in the air you'll get the texans you'll get the jaguars <laughs> i mean like they'll be they'll be good games sure. but they're uh, games that the giants very well can win oh i can't wait for that that noon kickoff in jacksonville between the giants and be the t- jaguars this year it's gonna be i mean danny dimes like you said contract year um Warmer, where did they top get him five at? Pick? Uh, yeah, I think they got him ten, at eight. Top ten pick. He's top ten pick. Um, this is they they did not pick up his fifth year option uh, for next year. So, do you have any? What are your expectations? Are they are they high? Are they extremely low? Are are you expecting Danny? To have no, a career I mean, year I... this year. Like no, from from his career based off his previous. Two, I mean, three or four years or three years that he's this played, is probably Danny's last year terrible. as the Giants starter um if we had to be honest you know like 
Okay. I mean, his his ups uh, the the best he could get to at this point is like a Blake Bortles, um, and you know I don't want a Blake Bortles starting. To... I don't know Blake Blake Bortles threw for four thousand sing- yards in a season. Do you think Danny jo- Daniel Jones can do that? There we go. We back. Um, oh, you're breaking up a little. Bit. Maybe, man. I mean, like maybe because, like, to be fair, the teams he had has had have not been great. The dude. The, what? Back to the question. As a Giants fan, what I would love to see is a functioning offensive line that can actually run the football half decently. Even I would say shooting for subpar, um, instead of just not at all, and keeping. Okay. Uh yeah. I mean that's been an issue for the past ten years. I feel like since Could the not. last five years of Eli being there, it was every year they threw in that guy Which from one? UTSA uh, or UTEP. What was is he still there? Um, no, it's it, I mean it's it's the Hispanic. The Hispanic oh guy. oh at guard. Oh, I thought you were talking about like running guard. back. I was like, um, yeah, I was gonna say, um, no. yeah, the guard. I, mean, y'all have Saquon, so I, I, I don't want to say anything and get it wrong just by kissing a Hispanic name. You know, yeah. you know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, though. But it's like, yeah, year after year, Andrew Thomas last year, you get these first, second round guys that have high expectations come in. And well, it that one was seems a like every year it's a bust. Air Flowers was another one. Um, and now he, he got paid like $50 million. Actually... Uh, I think the, the commanders added him a, a year or two back. No, yeah, he he had like one. Uh, he was playing on a one year deal minimum and had like a halfway decent year at guard, and that's that shows you how that how Eric thin Flowers? the offensive line position is in the league as a whole. Uh, that Eric Flowers can get can get a, get a multi year multi million dollar yeah, extension. Um, it's crazy. Did y'all have any get back to the, the additions this this? year for the Giants so did y'all have any free agent moves uh any losses key additions I mean honestly you can uh, you think will have a impact it, not really good no. or bad um nothing that's gonna make a huge difference in my opinion I mean the draft is gonna be where they're where they're making their money I mean like we did I believe did y'all did, did y'all resign um, Peppers Jabril which is I I believe they were. I know that was one of the guys that was on the market. Um, I mean, which is fine. I think I think that's a like for where they're at. Um, fun. They got what? They got Ricky Seals Jones. Uh, I think they got rid of Evan Ingram. I think Evan Ingram's gone, which oh. is fine by me. Um, I mean, Ricky Seals Jones probably isn't much better, but I don't know. Evan Evan Ingram was that's probably a worse really tough Ingram to watch sometimes. Like the same player. Dude drops so many passes. Yeah, but he had the potential. I guess he never never reached it though. Um, but let's let's move on to uh, to my team, the the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I know Corey Corey <laughs> said that. Yeah. Hold on. Layden. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to my team, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we haven't done much this offseason. I feel like we've lost more talent than we've gained. Uh, we traded Amari Cooper to the Cleveland Browns for a fifth or sixth round pick. Uh, that was purely based off the contract. We couldn't couldn't afford to pay him and re-sign Michael Gallup and looking towards the future with C.D. Lamb. Uh, we re-signed Javon Kurse, uh, safety, who had a career year last year. He's, uh, I think, he, I mean, he's the biggest part of our defense, in my opinion. He, and Dan Quinn's defense, he plays that kind of Cam Chancellor, close to the line, just creating chaos wherever he can. Uh, and I expect that defense to be Pretty damn good next year. Uh, they signed Dante Fowler, edge rusher, who played for Dan Quinn in Atlanta, and he hasn't done much since then. Uh, they lost Randy Gregory deal. to the yeah, Denver Broncos. That, was a weird... uh, that whole, do you hear about that but, whole situation? But Fowler, I mean, yeah. 
Uh, Tyler, so, I mean, that's that's one, is, that's probably is. the biggest like, loss if you could to get, me. I mean, he's not. Randy Gregory is way half better than Fowler. Or three quarters of what he was in Atlanta, you'd be getting a good player, but I think that's asking for a lot because he was good in Atlanta. Yeah, um, yeah, he had a multi. He had like a ten plus sack season there. I think he had a fourteen and a half sack year for them. Um, I'm just, yeah, if he can get six or seven sacks, that would be amazing but i'm expecting uh dorance armstrong uh to step into he re-signed this this offseason with the cowboys to kind of step into the randy gregory take up some of his snaps they, they're similar similar play type and build where they're not really going to do much against the run but throw him in there on third down and he can get to the quarterback pretty fast um other than that the Cowboys also on the offensive line. They cut Lael Collins. Well, you all, didn't you all draft uh, a guy? He's now in Cincinnati. Um, they draft, yeah, Tyler Smith out of Tulsa in the first round. Tackle. Um, looks like he's going to play guard this year, though. Uh, take Connor Williams' spot, who's now in Miami. Thank God he's gone. That guy, I mean, Texas Longhorn. I've met him <laughs> once or twice in my time on the 40 Acres not as a student go bobcats but he, he that guy could not he's not an nfl player he was a great college player a bit of a bit of a bust at the uh nfl level but yeah i honestly this is probably the first year that going into the season as a cowboys fan i'm but not, you'll but that will change in like two i'm months. not happy or don't tell me in two months you're not going to come back and be like actually i've looked this over and i think this is the best team i've ever seen <sighs> yeah i probably will i'll watch a preseason game i'll i'll Jalen Tolbert, the wide receiver out of South Alabama, I'll probably get real excited about him. He's a he looks like he's going to be a playmaker this year. Um, I'm excited to see Dak fully healthy. I don't think, I mean, coming off the injury from two years ago and and getting hurt in the preseason with the uh, shoulder and the quad injuries that that kind of hindered him towards the end, end of the year last year. Uh, he says now that he's 100, percent which I mean, I would be concerned if he wasn't. Um, but having him 100%, having Ezekiel Elliott 100%, and being able to utilize Tony Pollard in the backfield as well as putting him out in the slot, which I think they've they've kind of thrown that idea out there that they're going to do more of that this year. All right, sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties, but we were talking about how Tony Pollard is going to be utilized more in the slot this year for the Cowboys. Um, the coaching staff has indicated that that's something they're playing around with. Um, do you expect him to be let's, – let's kind of pivot here. Do you expect him from a uh, fantasy standpoint to be a, a more productive player than Ezekiel Elliott this year? Well, I was going to ask you that from a Cowboys perspective. Like, is he you – know, I'll say from a Giants perspective, I think that's who I'm more fearful of um, as a Tony Pollard. Just – because I, I, I mean, the past couple of years of Zeke have just been, eh. It, it's been it's good. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I think Ezekiel having the amazing first two three years that he had kind of, kind of set the standards a little too high. We we, I mean, this is the case for every running back in the NFL. Those first few years are usually your, your bell cow years, and then. You know, put on a little weight. You're a little older. You're a little slower. He he's not the same guy he was at Ohio State. I agree with you there, but he's still a top five running back in the NFL, in my opinion. He has the ability. He's the best pass blocking running back in the NFL, okay. hands down. He still has the ability to catch the ball in the backfield and make a guy miss. Um, I think the biggest difference for him has been the offensive line that the, it steadily declined really since he does that first year where he led the league in rushing his first year. Um, I mean, that offensive line was insane. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was the best year that since him and Dak have been in the league, that's the best year the team had. I think they went 13 and three. Uh, and that was the, 
the they lost to the Packers uh, and Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. It was a close one, though. Um, but the Cowboys' win total for this year is at 10 games. Is that an over or, in the, or an under pick for you? I would take the over on that. I mean, as much as I hate the Cowboys, I do – I do believe in them the most in this, like, because what would you say, and we can get to this in a second, but what you say the Eagles were at, like, nine and a half? Yeah, right below I think, that. I think the Cowboys are, are better than the Eagles by more than half a game, personally. Yeah, okay, I agree with you. I'm going to go with the over there, over on that win total as well. Uh, but, yeah, let's move right into the Eagles. Uh, they're at nine and a half, uh, the second-place favorite in the NFC East. They traded for A.J. Brown uh, this offseason. They're rolling with Jalen Hurts again this year uh, after he was exposed a little bit in the playoffs last year. for He, he simply cannot throw a ball more than 10 yards down the field and be effective. As, 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 a, as a fantasy holder of um, Jalen Hurts, it was kind of a wild ride because he'd um, – I mean – you'd like check the first stats and it'd be the passing page and you'd be like, Oh my God, he threw three picks and I started this man. But then you'd go look and be like, Oh, he ran for two touchdowns. Like hell yeah. But like, I feel like, I feel like we've seen that in the past where that, that is, it's played well for a season, but after a season it, it starts to get, and you said exposed. And I think that's probably a good word, but just, you know, it's just not as, as good at, at the second year around. Yeah. I mean, he just can't really make those NFL throws on a consistent basis. Uh, those those out routes that guy like he's he gets he gets jumped he's late a lot I feel like um, maybe having AJ Brown like a difference making receiver will make be better for him because they they've had a group of bums in the wide receiver room the past few years but AJ Brown also he's been hurt uh, his production's been down the past two years uh, I don't know I don't know I I. Can you have? Can you do you have any other additions pulled up besides, besides AJ Brown? I'm looking at. I know they, tri- they they had a few first round picks from what I remember, but once again, they're another team that is terrible at drafting. They they pick a. I know they didn't this year, but they pick a first round receiver. It seems like every year that's out of the league within three years. I mean, they I think got Jalen Rager is the most recent of those picks. They got a couple uh, dogs on their team, like D-A-W-G-S um, in the draft. Uh, Jordan Davis. I like Jordan Davis. I mean, the dude cannot play three downs. He is just a literal bowling ball in the middle of the line. Like, he'll stop He'll stop the runs in the A-gap pretty damn well. But if you want him to get outside a little more, it's not as effective. Um, Nicobe Dean's a solid linebacker for him. I like that pick. They got him late. Um, just, yeah, I wonder, was it that just pure injury concern with him, why he fell so so far? They said, yeah, that he refused to get his shoulder. They refused to get surgery on his shoulder, and that sketched people out. Um, I mean, to be fair, too, he was also kind of li- like liable to drop a little bit already because he's pretty small for an inside linebacker in the NFL. Um, you know, 5'11", 6 foot, like 100. Um, Can he run, though? I feel like the league's kind of... He can, shifting he, towards that he that can smaller run. guy that can that can cover a tight end or cover a slot receiver. He can certainly run. He can cover well, and I mean he gets sideline to sideline super well. But I mean he is he is a pretty small dude for an inside linebacker. But I mean the ability is there. It's just will he be able to keep up with the physicality of everyone else? I gotcha. Um, so they're at nine and a half wins uh, over under. What you got? I would probably take the under. Same here. I just I, I, I really think this is gonna be a down year for Jalen Hurts. We've talked about that. Like he he makes it work with his legs like last year, but again, two years in a row when you really can't throw a great football. Because at least and he's nowhere near the athleticism of Lamar Jackson, but at least Lamar Jackson can can throw a football well too. Um Better, certainly better than than Jay. and and run it and run yeah. it better than Jalen Hurts too. Twice. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, and so that you know that's why he was able to make it work. But like, I just don't. I feel like they're going to really force Jalen Hurts to throw the ball, and that's going to be a disaster for the Eagles. AJ Brown or not. I agree. I agree. Uh, moving on to our fourth and final member of the NFC Beast, the Washington Commanders. 
got a new name this year. Uh, they're at eight wins on MGM.com. Uh, that's that's a little low for me. They got Carts and Wentz this year. Uh, I I love Heineke, man. He's got the heart of a champion, but well, and, and he's and a. Let's be real. Uh, we're probably still going to see Heineke. So oh. I mean, like like we we're not going to see Carson Wentz for a whole season. That's just hey, a- Sam Howell. They got Sam Howell as well. <laughs> that was a, they got him in the drafts. Uh, yeah, but all jokes aside, I do think Washington that does have a good roster. Uh, they're kind of in the same situation as Philadelphia where the quarterback is holding them back. Uh, they took a, took a flyer on Carson Wentz this year after he had a decent year in Indianapolis last year, but couldn't, couldn't close the deal in week 18 against what was it Jacksonville Jackson. to make the playoffs <laughs> had like three picks in that game. I, he's, he's never going to be the guy that he was before he tore his ACL um, in that legendary big dick run, big, big dick <laughs> Nick run, that big dick run. I like that. Uh, but I think he, he could be a guy that w- in the right situation, similar to what he had in Indianapolis last year, could put something together. Now, of course, Washington is the most dysfunctional franchise in the NFL. So I'm not saying that this is the right situation, but I'm excited to see what he can do with, it, what what is probably his last chance to be a starting quarterback in the NFL? And I mean, you get Chase Young back this year too. Like the defense ain't bad. Like like I mean, Chase Young is a is a. Fucking... Oh well, he played he played a lot of he played did he how much was he hurt of last year? He he got hurt at the end of the year, I think. But that defense really took a big step back. Uh, the year prior, where they put up a fight against Tom Brady and the Bucks with Taylor Heineke at quarterback in the playoffs, when they won the division. <laughs> Yeah. They won that division two years ago. Think about that. Uh, that defense was incredible. Uh, Chase Young's rookie year. They had all the same guys come back last year, and I think they were bottom half of the league uh, in the 20s for defense, which really was weird all year. Uh, but eight, eight, eight wins, I'm thinking they're going to get 10 wins this year. I'm going to over on I that. Feel, yeah, I mean, nine. I feel like I think they'll win more than half their game. Because again, like, like – schedule is pretty favorable for them like you got the texans you got the jack they're better than texans they're better than the jags they're better than the giants they play them twice but yeah, that's I mean, of course a rivalry game so that's, that's probably we'll say three out of four wins there we'll give the giants one maybe that's just because it's me but but it's you know 75 percent of those games is still pretty good yeah and then you're halfway you're almost halfway there at that point um but yeah, I, I see that as a whole this year, the Cowboys, I think, take the division. Um, I could see Philadelphia sneaking in again as a wild, or maybe even Washington as a wild card just because of that extra uh, playoff spot that's there now that where pretty much half the league is in the playoffs is turning into the NBA. Um, how do you feel about that? A little off topic, but that extra spot, it's. It, it's, that it's team's like, never going to be good. Do you think that team will ever no, make a run? No. And, like, I mean, you look at it across all sports and, like, like you know, expanded college football playoff, like, you know, the bottom, what, how many ever many teams are going to make it. A, you know, the eighth team is a far difference from the first team in college football. I mean, that last spot in the NBA as well, the playing spots, those teams just aren't ever going to be good. But it's just games with a little bit more on the line. So people like you and I and anyone else are just going to eat it up because it's there. Yeah, that's true. I will watch a um, Saturday, 12 p.m. or noon noon kickoff playoff game any any day of the week. Yeah, like, um, it's just not as fun, but we're still going to watch it and we're still going to love it. Yeah, I feel you. It's just it's taking a little bit more of the luster out of the playoffs, like what it means to get there. For sure. I agree with that. No, I agree for sure. Uh, Do you got any closing comments before we get you out of here? I don't know. Go G-Men. Don't don't sleep on them. Did did you have the over? Or did you have the under on their seven wins? Oh, I had the under. Yeah. They seem like a six-win team. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll definitely have to get you back to talk uh, after a few preseason games or after our fantasy draft. Dylan's a member of – 
our long running fantasy league. And I uh, appreciate you. Oh, you are. Yeah. Well, I, I am no longer allowed to be the commissioner of any, <laughs> any of our sports league, but that's a story for another day. Uh, we'll, we'll probably get into that one when a, the dog days of summer are a little bit hotter. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you having you on and uh, let's, let's see this again soon. Yeah. Happy to be here. All right, well, that does it for NFL Talk on this week's episode of Lone Star Lowdown. Uh, make sure to follow our Instagram account at the Lone Star Lowdown. We put out uh, several clips from episodes, uh, previous episodes during the week, and uh, giving y'all some updates on merch and content that we are dropping. So we'll be right back with the Lone Star Lowdown.